Hello, Mr. Jason. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Mr. Craig. Well, it's been another doozy, hasn't it? Yes, yes, it has. Ah, well, who do we have today? Well, that's funny you asked me that because we have Mr. Chad Spade as he's spitting some style in process as he presents power so poignantly poignant. Pointedly poignant. <laughs> However, I'll you'll promulgate, Mr. Craig. You will. Did you just say promulgate? <laughs> I did. Well, let's I can go use a pomegranate. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Should have put that in there. <laughs> Buckle up. It's the Insurance Dudes Podcast. Boom! Boom. <laughs> Chad. Chad. Hey, how you doing, man? Hey. Oh, I'm doing great. How about you guys? Good. Good. Yeah. Now it is spade, not spied. Like I know. Craig Jason thought. thought it was spied. <laughs> <laughs> it's however it comes out. I'm sure I, I would. Mean. Borat. Borat said. Yeah. Spade. Yeah, there right. you go. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs> oh, horrible. Bad. Well, uh, if you've if you've listened to the podcast before, then you know what question we're going to ask you. Mm -hmm. What is the first concert that you went to? Oh man, Rolling reach Stone. back, all the way back. It was yeah. Well, bands that I can't remember when I was younger, but none of them <laughs> famous, right? Um, uh, it would have to be Rolling Stones. Ooh. Nice. That is great. So not New Kids on the Block. No, no I missed that one. Yeah. Not the Wiggles. <laughs> the Wiggles. I'm from a small town in Ohio, so those just don't come around. So we had to get our drivers <laughs> license and drive to yeah. Deep, So. Oh, to Motor City. Yeah, exactly. Nice. Well, awesome. Well, for uh, for folks who may not know who you are, Chad, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, tell us how you got into insurance and and why you're still doing it. Because why? Because <laughs> why? Yeah, why? What do we do? <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. You know, it was funny because uh, I kind of looked up to uh, my friend's parents when I was growing up, and and. Uh, so I just decided when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do in high school, I'm like, what do you guys do? You know, it seems like, you know, you have nice things and it's easy when you come from a small town to, to get a misrepresentation of what wealth is. Well, what he did is he would buy like seven, seven years of Skeeter magazine and for the price of one year and he'd resell it. But how he described it to me was, it's kind of like a state farm agency. And I was like, oh, okay, well, I can't do that. So I, I already named dropped there, sorry. But um, I went to another captive when I was in college and just kind of worked for an agent and uh, hunted down the district manager not knowing what that was. And I'm like, I just want to start getting experience. So I got a job cold calling for an older uh, agent and basically left me alone. And nice. I never did this before, but I love the phone. So it, it wasn't a big deal. Well, so, but, so you liked cold calling? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I had no problem with it back in the olden days. Yeah, uh, it's I interesting, mean. interesting, though. It's hard to find. I wasn't wants. good at the time, but <laughs> it didn't bother me. Uh, so, you know, it started off that way, but I think I was just too young at the time. I just didn't get it. You know, you're watching movies with your friends, and they talk about a life insurance salesman, and you're like, oh. Am I that easy? You know, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. uh, so I left, you know, and I, I went into another uh, business for uh, about five years where I learned my sales skills and burnout and then uh, uh, went back into it. But I learned back then that I knew I had to, to go the independent route for my personality. And so I learned enough about it back then to know exactly how to get into it and what I needed to do. And from there, I think that was back in like 2001. So from there, the time just warps in this business. <laughs> so yes. It's like, I feel like I'm still starting in a lot of ways you are because you're always evolving. Mm -hmm. um, you just get smarter as you fail, if you will. There's no really failure, but as you try and learn, you know, it, it comes along. And then one day you realize, well, it's, 
it's kind of here, but now I know how to start it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that that uh, that time doing the cold calling must have given you a ton of insight on how to run your agency when you eventually went back, right? Yeah. Um, or not. <laughs> well, I really, I really didn't handle too much with the operations back then. Um, but, you know, I always knew the phone was, even back really when I was a kid and I used to race BMX, I would just call the companies and say, are you sponsoring? <laughs> so I never had a problem with the phone. But um, uh, I'd say I learned I think I always had my ears open. So yeah, it definitely helped me get going by putting in those couple of years or whatever it was. Hmm. Um, the sales skills I ended up learning later on on the phone. And most of it is, is, is recognizing the truth in that conversation, right? Is this a real lead or not? Um, does it have potential? And uh, what, it, what are the things that you need to say to actually get their attention and, and, have them realize that you can, have, you know, you have their best interest in mind that you want to actually help them. Uh, that came later on. And, and I think my first pass at it, I was kind of selling my own, selling myself smoke first, right? Yeah. And uh, that I learned later on. And that, that was the, I think that was the difference that made the difference really is. You know, and where'd so, you go after I, that? The, the your I, first in, I actually, uh, uh, went in and trained and uh, became a commodity broker for about five years dealing with grains and, and like meats and metals and stuff like that. So in Chicago, uh, crazy. But no, no, out here, actually, it was the crazy thing. Uh, I'm sorry, out here in California, but from there is where it, it was a really cool group of, of people. I think we went really big. I started when we were like three, people in my division and it went to like 50 in five years. And, oh, wow. And, uh, but, you know, you just, you just burn out after a while. But I mean, there you learn the phone and you learned it very well. And we had a, we had a respect. We, had, we were very competitive, but also had a respect for each other where you could tell somebody, don't say that. And you're not going to get pissed off because everybody, everybody was coachable. has interest in mind. Right. And, uh, after that happens for a while, uh, then you you start to realize and start to develop your craft, and uh, and the worst the worst and best learning lesson is when somebody can call somebody after you lost it and close it. <laughs> yeah, man, really, that's never going to happen again. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so you know we helped each other out, and and it was very much a natural persuasion of what you guys are dealing with and some of the stuff that you do. Um, as long as you know the, the, the maps and models and the structure of it, it gets pretty easy as long as you enter it with intention in the right state. Yep. I, I always like that. Like there's a, I'd say once a month, maybe a little bit more than that, but like every once in a while, another agency will close a, a uh, an internet lead that we got and I was like see I, and I love it when they close it because it's like see you should have just closed it right away yep. like oh, yeah. you know one the of best. the yeah, yeah well it's like that way and it's the weirdest thing because even we might have the same map the same sales map you and I but there's also something underneath it you might be able to actually close somebody that I can't and vice versa. And it's the strangest thing. And sometimes that's the best thing to do is switch it up. I'm not a big fan of rotating like lead owners, right? But mm -hmm. sometimes it, it works that way. It's it's the strangest thing. And yeah. I, one of the things we used to do too to make it learn is once kind of the the pressure's off is, you know, call them back in a half hour. You know, just out of curiosity, you know, I know you're not gonna go with me, but to help me just out of curiosity, if you were, why would that be? Mm. Nice. Right? Nice. Now, soft, you, soft now, you've, now you've reopened future opportunity, but also they're not under pressure, right? You're not, you don't have your thumb on them. So a lot of times they'll tell you the honest truth. Well, you know, it was my brother-in-law. You know, he's my 
agent, broker, or whatever, right? And so, you know, you try to get that up front and uncover it, but sometimes they'll tell you the real truth after where you can learn from. Mm -hmm. You know, I just thought you were not, or I thought you were, or something like that. So as long as you can be open to receiving that type of information and using it and playing with it, then you can grow from it. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, what have been like through throughout the years? Uh, I mean, how, how was the first year that you opened your agency? How was that for you? Uh, well, you know that it turns out an empty filing cabinet is really empty. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you know, there's it's like a roller coaster when you first start it. When you when you when you win a client and that it feels great and you're like, oh, it's so easy. And then sometimes the cold comes a little bit, you know, but, <laughs> you know, and there's a lot of learning, you, you know, that you're going on. It, it's like you're full of ambition in the beginning and, but you really don't know anything. And then as you start to learn the policies and you start to, I'm an independent, you start to focus on building your portfolio of carriers that you're going to do business with that takes up a lot of time. And then you got, systems you got accounting you got all this stuff so eventually you get pulling away from it but in the beginning uh it was uh i started back when the, you know it was just the white pages you know i loved it we would just go and you know if i if i needed to grab something i would get them on the phone and convince them and drive to their house and go through the apps and come back home and bind it uh, nice. you know, and, and it's all doable, but then, you know, things came in where do not call list, people got rid of their home phones and then we just got away from it. But back when, when I would, we would just hire, uh, in the early days when I was in college, just as an associate agent, we would just have girls come over from high school right after school and jump on the phone and they would get three to five you know a couple hours they get three to five package leads i'm talking like everything and you know for a while we couldn't keep up with it and then you know we just didn't want to run it at night and had referrals coming in and so forth so let it go kind of when and then i was gonna i was thinking about getting it going again this was a little while ago but then it's like uh, how do you get the cell phone numbers but you know what times have changed anybody that's closed out closed on a loan in the past 10 years has used an email and a cell phone, probably. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right, you know, <laughs> so anyway, that's what we did. That was the only way you, you get out and get marketing. And, and it, it turns out like this thing, it not only brings, you know, people can reach you, you can reach people with it. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it goes both ways. You know, uh, Jason and I talk about that all the time because, it, it, and we talked about it actually on the coffee talk that dropped today, mm -hmm. is the importance of putting the right people in the right roles. And mm -hmm. it's so easy to, you know, especially for us uh, that, that have been, you know, where I was at Merrill Lynch on the phone, pounding it all day, mm -hmm. and you were at the commodities thing. Jason was at the bar. And, you know, but, but we're on the phone, you know, all joking aside, we're on the phone and we are pounding it. So in our mind, that sort of is the kind of like coming up. That's your pledge ship. That's how you get seasoned. And mm -hmm. it's a different generation now, right? Like, and, and also with the barriers to entry to this business where they have to get licensed, they have to do all this stuff. There's a higher value on that asset, right? That human capital. So to put them on the phone, making 500 dials, when you can pay somebody a much less to do that, it seems like it makes sense to, you know, organize it in that way where you had the, like the high school gals. That's awesome. Right. Because yeah. they probably didn't cost as much. And of course, minimum wage was less back then. But yeah. It, yeah. It, well, yeah. It, I mean, it was a, it was definitely a lead generator. Um, I think, you know, learn, I think you're going to work ethic there and uh, that, that regardless if you're doing the primary dialing because commercials are slam dunk. You can get a hold of them. most people have a problem with the follow through. Um, you know, but, uh, I, I think when you look at that, that work ethic, if you were at Merrill, you know, I mean, we would come in at five in the morning and you had the advantage of time zones. Sometimes insurance, you can't do that, but 
we would have lunch brought in. It was next, next, next. It wasn't like, oh, I made three dials, left a couple messages, right. I go on break. They're like, oh. no. It, you know, it's like game on all the way until 6.30 p.m. You know, you get up and go to the bathroom and that's about it. You're building. You got to see yourself yep. as a builder and it's go time. Yep. And if you can, uh, you work, if, uh, first of all, I don't think you can build a business in eight hours a day, but, but uh, you know, you just, once you catch your momentum, right, and you develop your craft, all you need is somebody on the phone. So, mm. you know, the celebratory walk or break after making a few phone calls is not going to cut it. Um, it just doesn't work that way. You can take five years and turn it into one or, you know, like sometimes when we're bringing an agent, like, look, you can do this to what you want to make in 10 or three, you know, what sure. do you, what do you want to do? Yeah, um, it's just your funnel, right? Are you going to put 200 people into the funnel? Or are you going to put 500 people into the right. funnel every day? Yeah. And it's never the leads. You know, <laughs> <laughs> the leads suck. I, I that's just, the common just, denominator here. I loved it. We had the best leads, you know, that <laughs> we ever, you know, you could ever have. And <laughs> making, you know, three, four hundred thousand a year, and another one making fifty and sixty, bitching about the leads. It, it's the same ones, right? What's no, they're the, the yep. Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross leads, right? You know, what's the difference? Um, you know, Jason, uh, Jason, you're none of your team listens to this, right? Yeah, they do. Oh, they do. Should yeah. I tell them your secret about the leads? No, I, I yeah, I'm sure that I'm sure they know. If the leads are bad, you, you, Hey, I'm going to call the lead company. We'll get them all dialed in. Yeah. And, yeah. And all of a sudden now, the leads are better. You know, the caveat is I will do that. I will yeah, do no, that I it, too. because I know that they do stuff on the back end. Now, can I confirm any of those things no. no but if i do that if i do that on the back end tell the lead company dude this is sucking you got to optimize whatever you have to do just otherwise we got to pull them it puts pressure on them then i tell my team hey i did it i, I, I yeah i <laughs> i put some pressure on the lead company and then you know I, these leads should be killer it's probably yeah. somewhere in the middle that's how it usually is you know yeah. I use it like this. It's just like sales. And this is what I tell uh, our sales agents. Do whatever it takes to get you the best result. For me, s saying that to the lead company, saying that to the insurance or our sales agents will get me the best results. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so that's what I do. The other thing but, that's funny is, is, you know, when we talk to a lot of agents and, and depending on where they are, the agent may say, well, it's much tougher in Georgia or it's much, right. much tougher in, <laughs> in, you know, Washington. It's like, you know, I mean, there is a, there is a closing percentage. That's your market closing percentage. There's a thing called a bell curve. So that closing percentage is in the middle. You can either be way below it or way above it. I mean, that's the way it works. And, you know, depending on how you hone your craft, if you become a better salesperson, you're going to close a little bit more and all the little steps. If you make more calls, if you do, you know, if you do all of these things, it's going to push you towards the right side of that bell curve. And, well, right. and, and I could promise you the people that are saying the leads suck, our market is terrible and all of these things, they're going to be at the bottom of the bell curve. Not because, because they're unlucky, but because they're creating the situation that puts them there. Well, it is. I alienated I, half our audience. One, one big eye opener <laughs> to me that I really had to develop that is because it wasn't naturally in me by any means. I was just, the, you know, super nice passive. You, it's now a good time, <laughs> you, you know, and the, the answer the phone. If the, you know, but anyway, uh, there was a guy that would come in, like, you know, he'd go live like a rock star all month. And then he'd come in three days towards the end of the month, right, payday, and do more than I did all month. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. There's That's another, crazy. <laughs> there's another way to this, right? There's, it, do I recommend that? No. But... It, you know, but it was an eye opener to be, there's a skill set to this, right? Yeah. And, and, it, and you have to, you have to inoculate it before it comes up, but you also have to be charismatic enough to, to make that link, right? Rapport. Mm. I think Neil said something where it's like lots of time on rapport. And I think 
rapport has been abused word and people are like, oh yeah, I get it. I get it. But no, like, mm. do you have that deep connection? No, rapport is, is 45% of the sale. It, it, to your point earlier, you said, you know, you may be working something and then Jason works it and, and then he ends up closing it. My, I would go out of on the limb here and say that if Jason closed it and you didn't, then he had better rapport. 90% of the time, you know, that's going to be what it is. Probably 90%. Well, it is, and it, it could just be my tone of voice. Real statistic. Maybe they don't, yeah. you know, it, it, who knows? But, I mean, yeah. g- generally speaking, it, everybody's closable. If, but the better question is, is are they the right fit for you, and is it worth the energy it's going to take? Yes, 100%. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, are they your ideal client? Because You know, do you have that much time? But anyway. Yeah. <laughs> the one, the ones that I always had the hardest time getting around is one is like, you know, I, I see everything's of value and it's better. And I just, uh, I'm just not going to out of principle. And it's like, mm, never spend enough time on that one. Right. Yeah. I just don't I, want to. I love, I love it when someone's difficult and it takes uh, 20 yeah. phone calls and all this stuff because, and then we win them and then it's like, wow, that was tough. Yeah, but it's going to be that tough for everybody else. And most people will not put in that much time. Yeah, so it's mm-hmm. like, yeah. So it's like when you do win that person over, it's like, it's a big win. Usually. Yeah, that should be harder to pull away because they're the same yeah. person. And you, 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 you know, you haven't started working until you get it, the no, right? Right. Most people are like, they thought they've been chugging along until they get the no. And yep. then it's over. And it's like, no, that's when it starts. But anyway. So we were talking, oh, oh. you go. We were talking about this in our, in our sales meeting this morning um, about just trying to, trying to read into the conversation. And you said something about that, Chad, too. It's listening, right? You're listening. Neil says it a lot in, in our stuff, but like you, you're, you're selling with your ears, right? You're listening to what they're saying to find the clues that's, that's how to get there. And one of, one of my producers this morning, she said, uh, this guy, I know that I know I have him, but, um, and, and we're, you know, we're a better deal. I'm giving him more coverages, you know, like the sweetheart, right? We, we should have it. And every time I talk to him, he's, it's some kind of crisis, right? And I said, well, okay. So there's some kind of, I said, what is the crisis? And she goes, well, I never ask him. I'm like, well, you need to ask him first of all, but you, but if he's always in a crisis, then likely you're creating another crisis for him by making him make a decision. Like he just doesn't know how to make a decision. So you have to identify what this, what this moment is every time that you call him and it's a crisis, right? This guy just wants, he, he's just afraid to make the decision. And oftentimes in most of these sales, that's what it is, right? Where they're, they're scared to make a decision. So once you uncover what it is, and, and people are afraid to ask, afraid to ask. Is there a crisis over there? Yeah. <laughs> show, somebody wants to show me their baby. <laughs> I'll be here in a bit. But yeah, it is. I mean, it's interesting. I, it's maybe, he, you know, I think we stopped listening a long time ago. We go into yeah. something and it's about us. Mm. All right. And if we, we, if, when you're engaging in a conversation, you're really in a pattern of hypnosis, right? So you go first and then you can meet them there. But if you're bringing all your conditions and wants and needs and desires and you're too busy thinking about that rather than jumping in their model of the world and helping them sort it out. Hmm. Right. If, if we can't go into the conversation and we're on the outside trying to focus on our motive, we can't make that connection. You know, you're too busy about, oh, do I have the price or do I have, you know, whatever it is that he wants to hear, or is he going to shut up or whatever it may be. But if you just let go of all that and just be present and, and truly listen, I, I think we'd go a lot further. Sometimes it's very hard to do, especially for certain people. But a lot of times they just, they want to be heard and nothing's going to happen until they get that out. Right. Yeah. And if you let them in silence, it's, like, ooh, it's awkward for everybody. But when they ask a question with somebody like that, just don't be the first person to talk. Let them process it. They're processing. And it's hard because 10 seconds might seem like four hours. Yep. Um, 
it, you know, but that's kind of the way that, that I've ran. It's like, you know, if they're going through something and they're, they're processing it, let them have that space. And, you know, they might, you might actually just help them resolve something other than their insurance. Yep. And I, I think that that's, I, I think that's probably the, the rookie move. The mistake is like mm -hmm. you teach somebody, okay, this is how you, this is what the opener should sound like. This is what you should do here. This is what the, the close should sound like. And we have all these scripts and everything and they're still worried about following the process yeah. that they can't be human and right. listen. And I think that that's the, that's the pro part of it is when they can transition, like they got all the, the steps down now they can just kick back and listen yeah well it's like are we operating like we were with our buddies when we were younger where you you couldn't be the first one to prove your point that you were right you know you're just waiting to, yeah and and you always had like some reason of why you knew more or better than than them right. or you had the right answer right and it's just <laughs> trumping right it's like are we going into our calls like that yep so funny but right. it's true I and I think for, for us that have a staff, like that's a good point to like really think about. There's a balance between all that. There's a balance between the, the process and all the stuff that we want. But like, yeah, it's so, we always tell our agents at some point in the conversation, don't talk about insurance. Like get off, talk about other stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's like, it's, it's really not about that. You're, you're selling feelings. And yeah. And they want trust and they want to know that you're credible. And from there, it's all about relationships, right? A lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of what I see going on about there is, is definitely, you know, people intending to have relationships, but really having a transaction model. Yep. And, yep. you know, I think really for, for us, whether you're captive or not, it's, we need to really focus on that relationship and as an advisory role to build our value. Yep. So what moving from, from when you started to now, the industry has obviously changed. What are some things that you've implemented in that change that has helped you crush it? Really it's business as usual for the most part. I mean, you, you have leads, you grow business, you try to round them out. Um, one of the, one of the most frustrating things about me along the way is we really, once you start building a book, it gets really hard to deliver. I think that the services or yeah, I would just call it a service that you intended to get into the business for. It, it, it gets overwhelming and you, you, you know, once you get a certain amount of clients, it, you want to keep growing and, you know, rate increases help you and, you know, people come and go and stuff like that. But I really got into the business because I, 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 I like the concept of risk and, I wanted to help people with that. I wanted to do good by that. And I just, we just never had the tools or the margins to be able to do it effectively. And uh, I, I think over the past, you know, few years or whatever that I discovered automation, I think that is going to, that is going to be the single biggest thing because when I, I got into it kind of by mistake and messed up with it, but um, I realized that, oh my gosh, I can do what I wanted to do when I got into the business, you know, because it was, it was kind of down at some points because it's like, I know what I want to be doing. I know what I should be doing, but I can't. I either have to hire too many people to give that type of service or I don't have the tools to be able to deliver that type of service to our clients. And uh, of course I got into automation uh, as the selfish side, the prospecting side, right? We all want help there. We want to be the super you and, and, and all of that. And then as I started learning more and more about it, I started looking like, Oh my gosh, you can, 
you can use this for servicing. You can use this for annual reviews that I don't know anybody doing, really. Um, and you, what can I do to reclaim our staff's time? What can I do to make things easier, to create space so even service can get into the conversation and spend time and, and focus on nurturing that relationship? And uh, that's been, uh, you know, it just totally re revitalized me and because it's like, oh man, it was a long wait, but now I can start my business the so, way that I wanted to, you know? Mm -hmm. And when you first start, first five, five, 10, whatever, you're just focusing on knocking the bills out and, and, you know, cutting even at the end of the month, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, because the more, you, you know, when you start from an empty filing cabinet, the more you grow, the more your expenses do. You're going to need people. You're going to need new PCs. You're going to need this, that, or whatever. And it just doesn't stop for a while. And so I think now this is probably the most exciting t time I've had in the business. And I really feel like we're just beginning. And I do feel like a startup again because of what we can do now. Well, so what can you do? What do you have some specific uh, little tidbits of I mean, knowledge nuggets that we can drop? Uh, it's very like important the to where whatever you do, you keep it as if it were you doing it. And uh, um, just a lot of email, you know, somebody calls in where they don't have all the information to make a vehicle or driver change or whatever it may be. You know, instead of typing it out or using templates or hit a button, it's got a form in it. They can do it on their own time. They love it. And it comes back and, and you can do it. So, you know, I, I need to get more of those type of emails uh, down, but the ones we have are significant. And out here in California, we have a carrier that, that has a ridiculous amount of renewal memos for personal lines. And, you know, we used to spread it across six CSRs and give the new business memos back to the agents. And uh, now there's, we have one doing it in 10% of the time that it just took her for her portion going and chasing that stuff down because they'll want to know everything like re-verifying discounts. You've moved what's your new work address because in California, we don't have credit. So those have been a big one. Um, uh, cancellation sequences, just reminders on the ones that make a mistake. Uh, and I, I would say the biggest impact so far is, is uh, renewal, you know, reviews, right? Renewal questionnaires way before they, not way before, but, you know, hey, I just got your renewal. It's going to be this, or, or, you know, it doesn't have to be a specific number, but looks good or looks bad. And here's what I'm going to do about it. By the way, what are your updates? Click, and we know when they click on it. We know if obviously if they complete it, and and uh, we know how much time's gone by this since they haven't clicked on it. So, offering that type of uh, review service, and it's kind of my baby step into the have versus need, like, you know, personal risk management, because most people should have an umbrella, almost everybody. And there's other lines that we have in here. If we're not looking at the whole picture, which, you know, I don't think you're ever going to be happy with what your PIF count is per household, but, but on the real value, if you're doing it for the right things, if we're offering a review, even if we can't get it, maybe it's health with their employer or whatever it may be. But if we can look at the whole overall picture, we can deliver something unique. And actually that's, that's where the real pleasure for me comes in. But that's also, I think, where the referrals will come in uh, yeah. higher, right? We're still 70% referrals, um, but, but just delivering, uh, I'm focused on, I just want to deliver that real unbelievable experience where they know everything actually is addressed. And, uh, you know, we get property updates uh, back that we that probably bring their premium down a little bit, or that would bring their premium down a little bit that we would we we just wouldn't normally have the time to open that can of worms up and so those have been really impactful for us but of course i enjoy the prospecting ones just as much so. <laughs> you can never see how people are engaging with your marketing you know back in the day you might mail them a quote or facts remember the facts but uh you know i know what they're doing in my emails 
I know what they're clicking on. I know, you know, where they're looking at. I know when they're opening up our, our quotes, we can tell when they're looking at it, you know? So that's amazing. And it's like, you know, you, you kind of would never know, did they get it? Did they open it? Right now you can actually know exactly what's going on. Mm. But to me, it's exciting because you can bring your pipeline to life even when you're not on the phone trying to get a hold of them. Are you using a FusionSoft? I am, yeah. Yeah, good analytics. Yeah, well, I mean, just with the, they're, you're never going to be happy exactly where you're at. There's always things you want you may not be able to get right now, but it won't take long to get them. But, you know, just the fact of being able to put the hyperlinks and the tagging, the send a post to Slack, to know when they're engaging in your emails is super killer. So there's a lot to do. It takes a lot to get there, but uh, it's fascinating, you know. And I think uh, I think it really can go a long way. But I, you can mess it up too. You really have to do it exactly as if it were you, and you don't want to overdo it, right? It's finding that balance. Hmm. I think he's having a mic issue over there. So, um, oh, look at that. He disappeared. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So as, as we, as we uh, get up here towards the, towards the wrap up, what, uh, what would you give like one, if you had one piece of advice to give out to somebody new that's starting in this business, um, what, what would that be? Don't get caught in all the stuff that's going on out there. It's focus on the cash register. Not know, the who cares if somebody has a better something or another, or this can do that, or, <laughs> or you know, just, just don't even look at it. Just focus on bringing it in and uh, discover your ways. You know, I don't think it's like somebody that's going to go pay a, a bunch of company to do videos, right? You don't even know what you want to say, you know, and, and next month it might not even make sense. So, save it you know don't get distracted on on bringing it in as the start you know and and nowadays which wasn't it wasn't there when i started we never knew we were going to use contact information like this like almost as important as the signature on the application get everybody's contact information including the co the co-insured right I think a lot of times we lose accounts because we never built that relationship, but we can now, even if it's a simple birthday card, something basic, but make sure you get the contact information and get it in your system where you can identify what's what, because that's a bummer when you realize that you're going to use all that information. And those two things, simple, focus on, on bringing it in and and make sure you get accurate contact information, even if you're not going to do it. And, you know, because I'll talk to people all the time. It's like, oh, I don't put it in the management system unless, and unless we win their business. And it's like, well, well, don't you have to put it in there to get it in? But anyway, and it's like, no, you like, it's always a lead. It's not lost. It's not now. You know, <laughs> so totally. <laughs> so those. Well, are that's it. those are it. That's awesome, dude. It's so funny. I, I was. <laughs> I tried to ask you a couple of things. I was like, oh, okay. And I didn't realize that my mic was off. Oh, <laughs> I can tell you're looking strange. I'm like, oh, what's going on? But yeah, I didn't know. I didn't. And then finally, Craig. I'm like, yeah. Yeah. Just like that. I like his little. Cool, man. Well, yeah. that's, that's awesome advice. And I think that um, mm. It, what a difference the world is today than it used to be. But those, those are really good. Uh, I mean, these are tools that we have that we have to, we have to take advantage of, especially on, on the indie side, man, you guys got a lot of, a lot of analytic, a lot of analytics to use. Analytics. And it's, it's too, and system. it's too much sometimes, but anyway. Yeah, but to your point, better. use the, yeah. Focus on the things that actually matter and use the the system that can get you to that end goal. I think people like to try to use the system and then adapt it to their end goal. 
or maybe they don't even know what the end goal is. Like it's just all these cool features and stuff right. on this. <laughs> yeah, just keep, all... that, keep that client right there in front of your face when you're making every decision. Yeah. You yeah. know. It is hot in here. Yeah. You should see these lights I have everywhere now. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm already thinking like when it's summer and it's already hot in this room, it is going to be 9 million degrees in here. Yeah, Craig went with the old, the old classic lights instead of the LEDs. Look at this. So they, they, Look at that. <laughs> Some up there, and there's another one over here. I mean, big time. Yeah, big time. <laughs> it is big time. So, well, cool, man. Thank you so much for coming on the uh, podcast. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And uh, we'll, it, it, how can people find you? Go to the uh, best way is uh, I, I have a Facebook group called Peer Potential Insurance Automation. And, uh, you know, okay. we discuss a lot of stuff on there. And I show a lot of the stuff, you know, just different things that I'm doing, try to share it as much as possible. Cool. I will join. That's awesome. Will but, you let me in? Yes. Oh, I don't cool. know, man. <laughs> I wouldn't, but but yeah. Anyway, yeah. Cool. Well, thank Good, you. Great and, resource. Uh, thank you. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate yeah, it. Sure. And, uh, you know, I wish you guys the best. Thank you, Chad. You take care, <laughs> you too, man. Chad. Thank you. Okay. Bye bye. 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 Hey, you've got to check out the Insurance Dudes Inner Circle coming soon where you get extended interviews as well as live coffee talks in our private Facebook group. Join the mailing list today at theinsurancedudespodcast.com. Hey, thanks for checking out the Insurance Dudes. Hey, please subscribe. We got some really great stuff coming out.